Uh, welcome back everybody to the next video in a series about uh, which vehicle is best to live in for full timing. Today we're going to talk about full size vans, um, whether that be a cargo van or a conversion van. Uh, we're just looking at full size vans. We'll consider both of the, the merits of, of uh, both cargo and conversion. Uh, the one thing that, that's good right out of the gate, if you're looking at a full size van, is you got more room than you're going to have in a minivan or an SUV or a pickup with a shell on it. So that's a nice start uh, and a good selling point for the full size vans. Uh, in terms of comfort, you should have room in a full size van to put in a decent bed, maybe a small kitchen. Um, you know, so you, you you have a little more room to work with, so you can get a little more comfort out of the experience. Ground clearance is also better on cargo vans usually than it's going to be on minivans or passenger cars. Uh, conversion vans, maybe not so much. They often have runners or, or trim that can be a problem to sit down low. Uh, but in cargo vans in particular, they tend to sit a little higher and have more ground clearance, which is a big deal when you're on BLM and Forest Service roads that tend to be rutted and rocky and kind of a mess. So that can help you avoid damaging your vehicle or getting stuck, uh, you know, hung up on something. So that's a, those are kind of some of the good things about uh, van, full size vans in general. With a cargo van, you got a blank slate. You can insulate it as you want, design it out as you want. You're not stuck with somebody else's idea of how your little home on wheels should should be designed. So you can do it yourself. So that's kind of nice. A lot of people appreciate that fact about going with a cargo van. And as far as stealth, uh, you know, a cargo van makes it easy to get out of sight. Uh, if you start modifying the outside, you may attract attention to yourself when you're trying to be sneaky. But you know, it does make it easy to get out of sight. Hang up a curtain in the front, maybe your curtains on the windows, and you know you're pretty much nobody's going to see you. So you can you can you have pretty good stealth with a cargo van. Some of the downsides to full size vans is difficult to work on the engine on any van, uh, just the way they're designed. If you do it yourself, it's difficult. If you're paying somebody else to do it, you're going to end up paying them uh, for the extra time they spend trying to get to anything in the engine because it's hard to get to. You can't see them. Uh, and you can't reach stuff, so it's hard to work on. Fuel efficiency on a full-size van is not going to be great. Uh, usually, most people's experience is between you know, 10 to 15 miles a gallon. There are some exceptions to that. Some of the newer vans are doing pretty are doing better. You might get closer to 20. Uh, you get into like the um, you know the Mercedes Sprinters. You know they're doing better, but but generally speaking, you can figure probably 10 to 15 miles a gallon for fuel efficiency. So definitely lower than your average minivan. Definitely lower than a passenger car. So something to be aware of if you're planning on driving a lot or if you're on a real tight budget. Uh, another challenge with full-size vans, it can be hard, surprisingly hard, to find a decent uh, van that's in good condition at a reasonable price. It's not uncommon to hear nomads talk about spending months looking for a decent van for uh, you know that, that fit their needs. There, there wasn't like way overpriced or wasn't really beat up really bad or, or didn't have you know a quarter million miles on it already. So that's something to be aware of if you're looking at full-size vans and and this varies by by area and by market. There are places where they're easier and places where they're a lot harder to find. But just something to be aware of. It can be hard to find them. And and I've heard of plenty of people who ended up going with a minivan just because it was easier to find a minivan. Uh, another consideration with full-size vans is that they're just awful to drive in the winter so if you're in the desert all winter or in florida all winter that's not an issue but if you have to spend time up north something to be aware of they they really don't handle well it's it's you know it's just like driving a two-wheel drive pickup um, you pretty much you might as well park them you know in the winter time uh unless you can get your find one of the rare four-wheel drive vans but those are expensive so so it's something to be aware of you're going to be in snow country in the winter with a you know the van you might want to give some real thought to like a minivan or something that that's going to handle a little better in the snow and then finally unless you've got a high top the the low roof height in a in a full-size van can still be a challenge uh it's going to be better than a minivan most likely but you're still going to be bending over all the time and you know, if you got back problems, for example, that that's that's a problem. So finding a high top van is even more difficult than finding a decent van to start with. Uh, there's there's a lot fewer of those out there. You can have high tops added on, but that's an expensive proposition that's going to run you thousands of dollars by itself. Other than that, as far as uh, you know, most 
full-size vans are going to be domestic vans, so there's not a huge domestic versus import discussion there. Uh, their Nissan as a new van is starting to get pretty popular, full-size cargo van. Um, that that's a newer van, of course, and then you start getting into like the the Mercedes uh, uh, van box panel vans. Um, but but generally speaking, most people who are getting cargo vans are looking at a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge. Probably you want to go with a three quarter ton or a one ton. The the half ton vans you're going to be putting a lot of weight in there, and you'll you'll likely end up paying for it in terms of maintenance and handling performance. If you're if you're load up build out a camper in the back of a half ton van, um, the three quarter tons are pretty popular. With the one ton, just be aware that some states make it difficult to register them or, or charge you more to register and insure them because they're classed as commercial vehicles. That's about it for vans. There's plenty of material uh, online in, in all forums on on uh, about car, full size vans. It's probably the most common option for a van dwelling. Uh, and for good reason. It gives you a good balance of, of, uh, of just about everything. It's kind of, it's probably, the full-size van is probably right around the middle of that continuum line we've been talking about between uh, cheap and, and minimal versus comfortable and, and, and expensive. So uh, the full-size van puts you probably right about in the middle of that. So I hope this gave you some helpful information if you're thinking about uh, what kind of vehicle you want to get for full-timing or if you're still trying to make your mind up about that. In our next video, we're going to talk about camping trailers, uh, both bumper pull and fifth wheel. So I hope you tune in for that and join uh, and see how uh, if those might be a good fit for you for full-timing. Uh, in the meantime, you know, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, you may want to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. Uh, I sure appreciate the support, and that way you'll be sure you catch all the videos in this series. And there's a link in the description to the playlist uh, if you want to see all the videos that have already come through uh, in this series. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.